guys, what's going on? Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Today I'm here with my man Todd. Now, it's actually super cool. This guy actually lives in Scottsdale with me. He, I met him at church. He's super amazing. But guys, he's super successful. A lot of our people that we do business with are all around the world. This guy's right in my backyard. So I became good friends with him. We went to Mexico. His family's amazing. His wife's smoking hot. They got good looking kids. Dude, he's 54 years old. He's in great shape. He takes care of himself. He runs a huge business. And he's got a really cool story, okay? He not only owns his own business, but also he teaches people how to do what he does, which I think is super awesome, right? Um, so anybody in this world that's gone where I want to go, I'm like, how did you get there? And if there's a way that I could learn that, um, he offers that as well. But most importantly, I want you to meet my good friend, Todd. Todd, I want to say I appreciate it's you, bro. Bad. Life is crazy. You'd never know what could happen in the next couple months. So why don't you guys just pay attention, listen to what Todd has to say. You're going to get a lot of value out of this, and let's kick some ass. So, Todd, 54 years old. You look good. Thanks, Dude, buddy. you're getting younger. Since he's met me, I feel like you're getting younger. Of course I'm getting younger. Yeah, yeah. You look better, man. Yeah. So uh, so let's rip, man, a little well, bit. Of, some some asshole told doing. me that I needed to get in better shape. I did tell Todd that when I met him. <laughs> I said, hey, bro, I said, you got to get in better shape, yeah. man. And uh, you know what? The crazy thing is, is that the most successful are the most coachable. Yeah. Right? 100%. Like, right, because you already were making good money. You already have a good life. You could be like, hey, who is this asshole? What you're saying is, hey, this is a good asshole coach. My coaches that were the biggest assholes are the ones that actually grew me. The ones that weren't assholes never did anything with me and allowed me to stay average. So I was that guy that was like poking at you. And there was this area in your life with fitness that you were already doing. But there's levels to this game. Exactly there's levels right. to money. There's levels to a marriage. There's levels. And you're like, oh, okay, well, I am doing that. But now I need to go to another level in that. And you did that, dude. And it shows. Yeah, so thanks. good job, man. I'm proud thanks, of you. Buddy. Thanks. Um, but let it rip, Todd. Let everybody know who you are a little bit about. Can we start out with what you're doing right now? Like what business you have, you know, what you're doing right now. And then let's back in to kind of like how this all happened. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, Todd Conklin, um, as you said, uh, live right here in Scottsdale. But I don't have any businesses here in Scottsdale, which is sort of a funny deal. But yeah. the business that I operate is, well, it's one of the one percenters. It's it's one of the top one percent real estate brokerages in the world. Uh, we operate in 18 offices, six states, almost 500 people uh, selling real estate, supporting those agents and training those agents. And uh, and uh, it it was it just wasn't quite enough. Like as many as many people as we were impacting through our real estate brokerage. Um, I felt like there were other people that were going through m many of the same things that I went through as a real estate agent, uh, as a, as a person who decided to go and build a real estate brokerage and they were going through all the pain that I had gone through. I just felt like there was a better way. So we have now launched our coaching company. All we do is train assassins. So, so basically there's, there could be two people watching. There's a person that's like, Hey, I want to get in real estate. Yeah. Right. But I don't want to join Todd's team. I'm just giving an example. I yeah. want to go join this real estate company down the street. They can go and they can actually train, which obviously we put your 10-week master class in the link below, but they can go and they can train on everything that you teach all of your 500 agents. Is that right? That's right. Work for that real estate company and kick ass there. Or, I mean, people can even join your company. I mean, I'm just asking. Like, sure. If somebody DM'd you and they're like, dude, I want to be a part of Todd's team. Yeah. Um, what is your, and by the way, you're just now starting to build your social media. Right. What is your social media if somebody wanted to DM you or reach out to you? Sure, it's Todd P. Conklin on Instagram. That's that's the best place to reach me. Yeah, Conklin with the C. Okay? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so, um, all right, so that's how you guys can follow him. Um, all right, so, so let's keep rolling. So right now, you got a coaching company. You have a company of 500 people that are selling real estate. You're in, you said, 16 different locations? 18 locations, six states. Okay, yeah, so 18 locations, six states. You ended up in Arizona, which I think we'll get back to that, yeah. right? Um, but let's let's get a little backstory. Before you were successful, before you could be a teacher today and teach people how to crush it in real estate, you know, like, where 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 did you start? Like, how does this roll? Like, where do we become? Like, because that, that's a that's a true story that a lot of people want to hear. Yeah. How did you come up? Well, I, I you know it's funny because right the odds of us being born is one in four trillion or whatever it is. Like, we're all born winners, is what they say. Which is great, but I was raised a loser. True. I was I was raised a loser. Like my, I was taught that you know you don't stick it out in relationships. I was taught you know how to how to come home and smoke cigarettes and drink beer and fall asleep on the on the lazy boy. Like that was just my life. So I didn't have role models in my life uh, that uh, that that taught me how to win. But something something at the time that felt really bad 
that happened to me that turned out to really be a blessing was that at 16, I was out of my ear, uh, kicked out of the house on your own. And, and one of the crazy things that happens when you are on your own is no, nobody's listening to you complain. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. There, there is no, oh, poor me, and so and so did this. Nobody gives a shit. Ultimately, you're either going to eat or you're not going to eat. Mm -hmm. It's all your. It's all your fault, win or lose. It's all your fault. And so I had to shut up and get to work. Um, and from that day forward, um, I was a grinder. I was a, I was a winner. No, nobody was going to outwork me. I, I was going to get mine. You know, we, we talk about the lion and the lion's going to hunt. Not all lions hunt, right? Um, but the ones that make it hunt. Mm -hmm. um, and I just became a hunter. Dude, I love that. I love what you just said. There's a lot of people that are badasses, but not all of them hunt. You know, I've got a team, and I'm just telling everybody that's completely capable. They wouldn't have been hired if they weren't a lion in my eyes. But why do some choose to hunt harder than others? Why? I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. but I, I truly think, and I'm not going to discredit anybody that's been raised great. Your children, you don't come from, you don't have a broken family. You came from a broken family. You come from brokenness, but you don't have that. Right. So. You know, our always feels like... Well, that's what do, you and I are always talking about, right? How do we like, give our kids, you know, how to... Because we don't want to kick them out of the house at 16. No. You know, we're not drinking beer. We're not drinking cigarettes. We're not being a loser. So, like, so like, someone's going to have to teach them a lesson at some point. Because we're teaching them lessons every day. And I don't want that to happen. But, like, we're teaching them lessons every day. But if it doesn't create pain, it doesn't create mental toughness. And so what happened at 16, you had a lot of pain. And nobody would hear you. Nobody cared. It was inefficient to complain and whine. And you freaking grew into a man. Yes. Immediately. And a, and a hunter. Immediately. So like anybody watching this, like if you got something bad going on in your life right now, you'll hear what he said. He said, count it as good. You count it as a blessing. You go, hey, it turned out to be a blessing. Yeah. And I love that because a lot of people would, would flip it, make it a victim deal. Oh, you don't understand. They kicked me out. No one was there for me. You're like, dude, the best thing that could happen was no one was there for me. It made me work. Right. So cool, man. All right, let's keep rolling. Well, I mean, you know, so... Did you start in real estate? I or? didn't start in real estate, okay. but I've always been in sales. So one of the great things about sales, I had I had a job early on where they, you know, was being paid hourly. I hated it. I, listen, I got ADD. Like, I, I, I had to show up at a certain time. I could work until the end of the, you know, the clock. Like, it was horrible. Every day I knew exactly how much money I was going to make. I, I hated that feeling because that was the ceiling. I knew exactly how much money I was going to make. A lot of people will look at that and go, oh, hey, at least I'm going to make you, this much money. Were you telling me a time about sometime you, you saw somebody else's check? <laughs> it wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. Uh, that, but. Uh, there was somebody that was telling me, I, I swear it was you, but maybe it was somebody else. They were telling me one time they were doing an hourly job. They were busting their ass. Yeah. They were working really hard. And then, you know, they looked at the supervisor. They found the supervisor's check. Right, like yeah. their boss, 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 and they were thinking about like moving up the ranks, taking their job one day, and they opened that that person's check because it was left on the table. You know, they're like, let me just peek, and they're like, hell no! Like I go through five more years to become the supervisor and do everything right, outwork everybody. Hell no! And then they were talking about how they opened another person's check that was on the team that was making the same money in them, as them, but they worked their ass off and that person didn't even work and they got paid the same. They're like, screw that. Right. I got to get into co a commission based job. Yeah. And, and that's similar to what happened to me. It, it, w there were, there were five of us mm -hmm. that were doing the same job. Um, and you know, arrogant or not, whatever, I was young. I, I just believed that I worked way harder than the rest of them. I honed my skills. I cared about what I was saying. I cared about how I was saying it. I understood the process that 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 was step one led to step two that led to step three. I understood it, mm -hmm. and and I was, it wasn't selling, but I was creating a much better experience for the customer than the other four people were. But we were all being paid the same amount of money, yeah. and that made me mad. And so I went out and 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 I cut my teeth in sales and went. I found it like this. This was it for me. You're bit by the bug. I was bit by the bug. Um, it was in health club sales. I'll never forget oh, that's it. That's cool. 
uh, and I, I went out and I crushed it. And, and it was one of those 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 deals where, you know, when you get so good at something, mm-hmm. where they they don't they, if if you look at the score scoreboard, they, they move you off to the side because oh, that's so right they don't they don't want everybody else to, to be demoralized by the fact that you've kicked their ass by what so a much. Special feeling, dude. Yeah. The fact that you just said that made me so happy. Yeah, it was it was rad, but it was it was one of those times where it, it, I, I don't know if. It, it, if we have time for the story, but I'll, I'll tell it anyway. So, no, tell it. <clears throat> so back in the day, what they would do is they'd put these drawing bowls all over the place, and and they'd be in all of these different stores, stores, and people would come and they would enter a drawing to win mm-hmm. a one year mm-hmm. or two week membership. Hustle Summit Two, it's right around the corner, y'all. What I want to do is get you in the room. Last time, Hustle Summit, the very first one, it was standing room only. We packed the house in less than thirty days. What I want you to do is don't take my word for it. Don't take my advice. Listen to what the people that actually showed up. Information has been on point that you can go home and actually start doing right now. We're part of Eric's coaching program, but his specific form of sales, he speaks well in teaching us what to do on these calls. Energy is super vibrant. Obviously, Eric's bringing up all the heat here. To get my frequency up, man, this has been the perfect place. High energy levels, man, and so it's it's going great so far. The energy is infectious. The people, know everybody's here is ready to get after it. Everybody here is wanting to make a change in their life or their business. You're walking into a different reality. I know that he has a track record of doing this business at a high level. So salespeople respect high-level salespeople. Hustle Summit Live. Make sure you're at the next one. And for those of you that are wondering, is this for me? Yes, this is for you. Whether you're just thinking about getting started in the wholesale industry, you're working that nine to five, you're in the rat race wondering, how do I get out of this? You may be a wholesaler that just can't get consistent results or you're thinking about building a team and you don't know where to go from here. Or all you realtors out there wondering, can I get out of the traditional real estate and go into the wholesaling where I hear about these big, fat, juicy spreads that my commissions possibly couldn't equate to? If that is for you, you're qualified to put your ass in the room. And for everybody that's wondering, where is Hustle Summit 2 gonna be? It's in Scottsdale, Arizona, y'all, at the Lion's Den, Andy Elliott's office. I'm telling you, this is the place that you want to be. I'm gonna show you how to consistently make between 20 to $100,000 a year, like clockwork, so you can finally get paid what you're worth. Scottsdale, Arizona, the lion's den. And then a couple times a week, they'd grab all the leads and they'd bring them back to the salespeople. And we would sit there and we would divvy up all the, all the slips, right? These yeah. little pink slips. I'll never forget them. Yeah. And so we would all look through them. And, and I can remember at first, I would look at them and I'd be like, well, you know what? These, these people right here, like they're going to be pissed when I call because I'm giving away two-week memberships. And, and they wanted a one-year. So I'm going to put them aside because I call them. I don't want to call them because they're going to be mad and they're going to hang up on me and they're going to call me names. Yeah. And then I would look over here and I'd call these and I was okay. Like I'd, I'd, I'd get some sales. And, mm-hmm. But, but here, here's the thing about that kind of sales. You, you eat what you kill. Mm-hmm. And I got tired of being skinny. Mm. And so finally I thought, you know what? I wonder if I changed me instead of trying to worry about changing them. If I changed me, could I get a different outcome? I'm going to write that down to eat what you kill. I've heard that a million times, but I was just talking about something this morning about eat what you kill. And I just, I need to type that to myself because number one, I'm going to use this for something really good, but go ahead. Yeah. So anyway, I, 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 I'll, I'll never free. This is a long time ago. I'm going to date myself, but, but I, I remember I bought this, this book and it was this plastic book and you opened it up and there were like eight cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. In it, and it was a guy by the name of Zig Ziglar, oh, yeah. and I listened to Zig probably a thousand times, and I got so good that I could pick up the phone and I could literally change that person's mood. They didn't see me, they didn't, they didn't feel me. They, yeah. they, 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 all they do did was hear me. But I got so good, and I can remember one of one of my trainers <clears throat> said, "Hey, listen, whatever you do, when you bring these people in for an appointment, only two or one person at a time." Because what happens is everybody in their DNA, we're all, all going to have an objection. But if you have three or four people in a room together and one person comes up with an objection that the other two or three didn't have, well, now they all have it. And I'll never forget that because there came a time where I was so good at knowing what to say, how to say it, and when to say it mm-hmm. 
that I would call people and say, hey, listen, Andy, it's Todd, powerhouse gym. Uh, buddy, you entered a drawing to win this one year and two two week membership. I just call in to congratulate you, man. You you won. You won two weeks. I'm calling just to s- simply schedule an appointment with you. you. Come down here. I'm going to get you your membership. I'm going to show you around so you don't feel weird when you come into the gym. But man, I'm I'm looking at this. Somehow you won three of them. So I don't know if you've got a couple of buddies you want to work out with. But, man, you can just give them away. Dude, that's genius, bro. So now I'd have three of these dudes or gals that would come in, and I would tour them around, and I was so good. Everybody else was selling one membership at a time. You were selling multiple. I was selling three. Dude, that is the most beautiful story I've ever heard in my life. You're smart, bro. That's Thanks, why buddy. I like your ass. Yeah. And you were just a young kid back then. Oh, man, I was I, – I couldn't even drink. Like, I wasn't old enough to drink. Yeah. Well, I love that you were killing it and you were doing everything at such a high level. They wanted to remove you to not make anyone else feel bad. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's dangerous. That's okay. dangerous. Um, so, and by the way, that's the power of sales, guys. And that's the power of this audio, of this podcast right now. This is what this is about, man. You want to get rich? Sales and leadership. Sales, baby. Yeah. Sales. Um, all right. So let's keep going. All right. So so ultimately, I end up in um, real estate. Fast forward. Uh-huh. I end up in, in real estate. And... Listen, I love real estate. I, I, real estate changed my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was a bigger ticket item, uh, but but more importantly than that, it was something that everybody needed. It meant something special to everybody. Hey guys, as you're watching my man Todd, number one, this guy is a massive real estate infrastructure. He's a massive team and he's extremely successful. A lot of you right now, you want to build something massively successful yourself. Todd has a 10-week masterclass. Um, number one, I've taken it myself. It's absolutely insane. You guys can get access to that. If you just go down to the description box below, there's going to be a little link. You can click on it. You guys can actually train with him. And everything that it took him, you know, 20 years to learn, 25 years to learn, you guys can learn this in literally 10 weeks. So, guys, go down there. Check it out right now. I love you guys. Let's get back to the video. Like, I, 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 when you first got married, when you, when you first have a kid, you know, first steps, last steps, all the memories in between. Like, it's spectacular Mm -hmm. and i got into the business and i'll I'll never forget like it's gonna sound super arrogant i I got into the business and i i felt like hey i'm gonna bring my sales skills to real estate Mm -hmm. because what was really happening is people were getting into the real estate business just because they liked people and that kind of stuff and and you know they 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 talk a lot about like talent versus skill Mm -hmm. and hard work Mm -hmm. well i had the skill and the hard work maybe i didn't have so much talent in, in real estate, but I, I was going to outwork you and I was going to, I had the skill and, and skill will kick talent's ass Mm -hmm. when it's used properly. And that's what I did. So I got into the real estate business. I'll never forget. I had a job lined up with a, with a buddy of mine, um, in San Diego, uh, who, who I called and I said, Hey, listen, I I'm in Idaho. Uh, I'm, I'm on vacation. I love this place. I'm thinking about staying. And he said, Todd, you're a young man. Uh, you got one good failure left in you. Go do it. I'll hold your job for one year. Go, go make it happen. And it, it was an incredible blessing. This guy's still a great friend. He actually ended up being an investor in my company when I decided to actually uh, go the, the leadership route. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I got into real estate, and I very quickly became one of the top real estate agents in my marketplace. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about why, like, but obviously we know hard work, obviously don't discredit that, uh, skill. You obviously trained, you talked about cassettes training on anything and everything you could get your hands on. You said you watched it thousands of times, Mm -hmm. which means he didn't watch a training program once. Once he realized that something was valuable, he devoured it. Right. I mean, obsession, obsession. Yeah. Yeah, Obsession, which is why I love you because you're an obsessed freak. Yeah. Um, Anything else you want to add to the magic bucket? Yeah, you said it earlier. Like, I was coachable. And I think that's one of those things where people are like, well, I see that guy or gal over there, and, you know, they're not going to listen to anybody. Like, they've already gotten there. No, 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 no. They got there because all they did was listen listen to other Mm -hmm. people. That's so good. And that's the power of leadership, right? Like, Like, the reason that we hang out with the people that we hang out with is because we can see that they think different they act different they have different standards 
and and they adhere to those standards and we're open to correction we're open to guidance we all want to get from point a to point b in less time and less pain and and that's really what the big difference maker and there was one other i was a honey badger like at the end of the day remember i knew it was my fault because i knew at 16 that the only way i was going to eat is if I took care of me. If I failed, it was my fault. If I succeeded, it was my fault. And so I wasn't going to let the opinions of other people get in the way. Mm. And the market that I went into, it, it, it was great. Small market, fun, great market, lots of fun, wonderful human beings. And yet, they're, they're, just like anywhere else, there were a lot of people that were like, well, listen, when you get into the real estate business, you've got to cut your teeth, right? There's some certain failures and benchmarks that you've got to get to. They were trying to frame you to fail. That's right. That's right. And I remember a story that you tell about your first car sale mm -hmm. or your first day selling cars. Mm -hmm. And and that was it, right? Ignorance is bliss. And Dude. and you had it naturally. Stay dumb. Right? I had to intentionally make myself dumb, right? I had to avoid all of these people who they weren't achieving. Like I'm talking about the, the million dollar salesperson, the $2 million sales. Well, that's not why I was getting in the business. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a $25 million, a hundred million dollar business. So I just didn't listen to any of the other people, which didn't, didn't I, make I, a lot of friends. I, I want everybody to understand this real quick. Cause this is super important. You said that everybody was trying to frame you mm -hmm. that this new business was going to be hard and it was going to be tough because it probably was for them. It probably was for a lot of other people. But it didn't have to be that way for you. And it doesn't have to be that way for anybody. Truly, whatever you think is going to happen is going to happen. The law of manifestation yeah. is real. Todd, it's real. Uh, the law of attraction is real. It's real. Whatever you're thinking about is what's going to happen. Those people were thinking this is going to be hard. I'm going to cut my teeth. You know, people aren't going to like me in the beginning. You know, this is a, a, a time game. And so it is. But then a crazy ass guy like you that you said ignorance is bliss where you're like, ah. yeah, no, I'm going to slaughter this. Right. So thank you. Love you guys. Stay over there. You won't like what I'm about to do. You won't like what's about to happen, but I'm slaughtering this shit. I'm going to, I'm going to be a killer. That's the secret, man. It's the secret. And, and I had, at this point, I was old enough and experienced enough to know that I was going to have to manufacture it. Mm. And so, so by manufacturing it, I basically said, Hey, listen, ignorance is bliss. Nobody told me quote unquote, nobody told me I couldn't do $3 million in sales my first year. Nobody told me I couldn't double it every single year. Nobody told me that I couldn't door knock and make phone calls in a, in a resort market. Nobody told me until suddenly I had arrived at a place where I was like, holy smokes, look, look at what I did. Uh, I, I had broken all the records I, in, in a market where the, the most anybody had ever sold up to that point was about 25 million. I did 60, you know? And so it was one of those, it was one of those times where you go, all right, well, doing it was really hard. Being broke is really hard. I've been both. I've been a failure and a winner. Winning is way better. So you choose your heart. When you know the power of what learning one little thing could do in your life, you'll never take for granted one little thing ever again someone says. Boy, that's the truth right there. I mean, that is it truth. could be a marriage advice. It could be about parenting. It could be about God. It could be about your business. It could be about your physical health. You know, like just one little thing, if you're consciously paying attention, like, the, the key, what I'm learning is that your whole life you've been conscious, like you're, you're aware, self-awareness, you're creating self-mastery, you're creating, if I don't have this, it's, it's just because I need to work harder or I need to learn more or, you know, whatever. But also you have an abundance mindset. As I've heard you, the whole time that we're speaking, your abundance mindset is what's kept you surpassing other people. The eat to kill and the abundance mindset mixed together is a very dangerous uh set of ingredients yeah the abundance mindset means i can have as much as i want so like like there's no limits and if you truly can brainwash yourself that that exists and then you understand that you eat what you kill right which is i love that like that means if i don't go out today and do anything i don't get nothing right and i have to live with that and and, that, and by the way it's no one else's fault but mine that's the gift right so so you know there how to, how to frame this there are some people who will take this idea, this of extreme ownership that says, it's all my fault. Damn it. Nobody's here to help me. Damn it. 
Like, it's all my fault. Like, oh, poor me. Like, nobody's here. Nobody's going to help me. Or, hey, it's all my fault. Like, I get nobody can impact whether or not I succeed or failure or fail. Like, I'm the person. I've got this. I'm in complete and total control. The world is not conspiring against me. The world is conspiring for me. Everything that I that most people will see as an obstacle, I see as an opportunity. Mm. Those are the ones that light the world on fire. Those are the ones that change the world. Those are the ones that change lives. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me in 2010. In 2010, <clears throat> in, well, let me back up. In 2006, really, I didn't even want to own my own business, if I'm being 100% honest. I did it because a friend was wronged and he needed a place to work. And I'm like, well... All right. So I opened up a brokerage. I did not want to own a brokerage. And then the Great Recession happened. And in 2010, I was miserable. I was in, I can remember, I was in a bar in Ketchum, Idaho. And I was sitting there with another guy. And we were, we were drinking cocktails. And we were complaining about how the world has changed. And look at how horrible it is. And, and, <laughs> And, and it was as if God came down and just tapped me on the shoulder and said, this is not who you are. Get, get out of here. This, what are you doing? And, and, I, and honestly, it was that moment. I looked at this guy. His name was also Todd. I looked at Todd and I said, what if, what if what's going on right now is actually happening for us? Hey guys, as you're watching my man Todd, number one, this guy is a massive real estate infrastructure. He's a massive team and he's extremely successful. A lot of you right now, you want to build something massively successful yourself. Todd has a 10 week masterclass. Um, number one, I've taken it myself. It's absolutely insane. You guys can get access to that. If you just go down to the description box below, there's going to be a little link. You can click on it. You guys can actually train with him and everything that it took him, you know, 20 years to learn, 25 years to learn. You guys can learn this in literally 10 weeks. So guys go down there, check it out right now. I love you guys. Let's get back to the video. And that's exactly what I did. I went out immediately, I put together a business plan that said, hey, I believe that all of these real estate agents that are in all of this pain and anguish because they don't have great leaders, mm -hmm. they don't have great skills, they've got people. Listen, in my industry, w w this is how it works. You go out as a real estate agent, you have these incredible dreams, you're like, hey, this is gonna be incredible, I'm gonna change my life, I'm gonna change my family's life, I'm gonna change my community's life, I'm gonna go out and absolutely crush it. They go out and they get their license. They join with a brokerage. And here's what the broker does. It says, hey, here's a box of cards. Here's a couple of signs. Good luck. Call me if you need me. And they think, well, it's no big deal. Like if the agent doesn't make it, like it doesn't cost me anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's total crap. I think it's immoral, honestly. I, it should be costing them something. It should be costing them sleep, knowing full well that mm -hmm. these people had a dream. And, and it is my obligation as a leader to help them realize that dream. And that's, and <clears throat> so that goes back to why you built your master class. That's it. Yeah, guys. So if you're watching this and you guys are relating with Todd, I want you to understand something. You don't have to be in real estate to train on t Todd's 10 week master class. You don't have to be in real estate. If you do and you don't take it, you're an idiot. Okay. Because you need to know everything this guy knows. He has 500 people in his agency. He's continuing to build and grow and he's sharing everything on how he's creating not only people to build, you know, future brokerages themselves if desired but really go in and just crush the real estate industry and destroy it and all the obstacles you'll have, all the things you'll need to do to make, like he said, people were like, I want to make 1 million, 2 million, 3 million. He's like, I want to make 25 million. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is the kind of guy that you want to push you need to be your coach. So that's super cool. So as you start going through this, when did you decide to, to open the brokerage? What was the draw line on that? Well, the first brokerage was an a accident. The, the, the subsequent brokerages were, were just a way to grow and scale because I had this idea that, hey, you know, you, you, you've got, there's three different types of brokerage platforms, right, or, or models in the world. There, there's, there's a place, which is typically a local yokel brokerage, right? God bless them. Good, hardworking men and women. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's a competing uh, broker. The agent or the owner of the brokerage also sells. They don't really offer much, but they have a nice building or whatever. And then you have platforms. This is a lot of the virtual platforms that are out there. They don't have any bricks and mortar. They say they have a technology stack, as an example. Um, they're they're less expensive, right? Mm -hmm. And they should be. They don't have. They're not offering much. And then you have partnerships. Well, I believe that that the partnerships was the full service model that provided the right level of training that that we needed as salespeople to have great lives. Mm -hmm. And see, that was the thing. So what what happened in two, 2010 for me was. 
I just got 100% focused on other people. It didn't have anything to do with me. Mm-hmm. We existed for one thing and one thing only, and that was to change lives, period. And, and so everything that we did had to answer that question. Does this benefit these people in a positive way to help impact their lives? And, and I knew how to build business. So for me, the easiest thing to do was to help them build businesses. So we grew our organization until we got to a size that we could actually deliver best in class training, best in class technology, best in class support, all of this stuff that, that most companies just can't do. Um, and, and that is how we built a 1% company. So amazing. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It, it was, it was a lot of fun. I learned some pretty valuable lessons. So, mm-hmm. um, talk about a couple. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, I, uh, my wife and I have been married, uh, now for 18 years and <clears throat> I think I, sh- I, I, I touched on it a little bit. What I was taught, uh, was Listen, by the time I was 16 years old, I, I had, you know, I, I joke, but I had four dads and, you know, three moms and like it was chaos. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, my mom was married four times before I was 16 years old. Uh, so, so I was really good. I, I had a demonstrated, proven process to get divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't want that for my kids. Uh, and, and listen, I'm going to say something that's probably not going to make a lot of people happy. But um, if you're contemplating divorce, I'm going to tell you something right now. I, 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 your kids aren't that resilient. It will impact your children and it will impact them in a negative way. Uh, so before you start making excuses as to why you should get divorced, unless there is some kind of an ab- abusive situation, which I totally think you should run for the hills, uh, what you're about to do will impact your kids. Um, and so it did impact mine. And so I decided that I wasn't going to do that. I was going to show and provide a different kind of life uh, for my kids. Um, and that became very difficult when you are a real estate agent, when we all think that we're in control of our schedules and we learn very quickly that the customers are in control of our schedules. So understanding that this is actually a family business and that you better have your spouse on board with what it is that you're doing. And you better both understand what the goals are, what the plan is, and you can hold each other accountable to executing on that becomes very, very powerful. So that was a really good one. And Shannon and I have well, an incredible one, you marriage. Write that down. That's an Instagram reel right there. You need to timestamp that. That message that you just said, that needs to be shared because I love what you said. You said, listen, put yourself aside, you and your partner, for just a minute. If you have kids, I need you to know your kid. And, and, and the title of that reel is going to be, this is why parents kill their kids. Mm. Or this is why parents crush their kids. Because they don't think about their kids. They're thinking about this. That's right. Which they could work out. That's right. They got married for a reason. They, they loved, loved each, each other, other at one point. Yes. Unless you said, unless it's abusive. Like, you have these kids, they're not that resilient. You may think, oh, my son's going to be okay. You have no idea. No. You have no idea. So, what's harder? Watching them, okay? And then figuring out what the consequences are there or us working this out. Yeah. You know? And by the way, you'll learn a lot of the times both people really deep inside underneath all the hurt want to work it out. One thousand percent. Yes. My brother, when he got divorced, uh, he signed his uh, divorce papers and he goes until he was signing the papers. He's like, like, I, it was hard. He didn't want a divorce. She did. Yeah. She was just, she was losing her mind. But he's like, dude, I didn't want to sign those papers. He's like, yeah. dude, I just, I can't. He goes, when I was going to sign the papers, I didn't think about all the things at that moment I hated. I thought about all the things that I loved about her. And, and I think that that's kind of the catch of, uh, you know, like, like, I just had a conversation with somebody this morning on the way in. And their life is in chaos right now. And they think, he was like, you know, my business, I got to find, I'm upside down in this deal. I've got this problem. And I go, bro. I bet your marriage is hurting right now. Like, it's not really business. I said, if you and your wife would have had sex last night, you guys would have woke up this morning in each other's arms. You guys would have had a cup of coffee together. You guys would have taken a walk outside. Yeah. All this shit. Yeah. We've been getting pounded on our whole life. Yeah. It would all be figure outable. Yeah. That's the problem. And then, and they're killing each other. And what's happening is, they think that, you know, like she needs to be with the kids and he needs to go to the business. 
and they need to separate when actually that's the worst thing they can do. Right. They need to come together. That's exactly right. Because, and, and, you know, like, dude, there's just not enough people teaching that. There is not. You know, well, and they're not talking about it, which is, which is what we're doing. Because it right? takes courage. My, my wife says, hey, if you're showing up poorly in one place in your life, you're showing up poorly in all places of your life. You can't mask it. Mm. And what's interesting about that is that's a powerful statement for me because I spent my life trying to prove to the world that I was worthy when what I really needed to be doing was proving to myself and to my wife that I was worthy. That's the only thing that actually mattered. So the the, the valuable lesson for, for me through this whole process is that if you if you don't have it all, you don't have anything. I just I just heard yesterday that a buddy of mine died, mm -hmm. and uh, he he was an incredible dude. He built a great real estate company, um, did a very cool exit uh, at the peak of the market back in two thousand six. He went out and started this incredible tech uh, company that that provided incredible value to agents and the consumers. Like the guy, the, the, we've referred to him as the Oracle. Like he was just an incredible guy, but about five years ago, he came into one of my offices in Colorado and, and he easily a hundred pounds overweight. And he was talking about, you know, how he was really excited. He was kind of on to the next chapter of his life. He was getting ready to appoint a new president to his company. He was going to go spend time on his lake in North Carolina and spend time with the grandkids. And Shannon and I pulled him aside and said, buddy, what are you doing? Like, you, you have to live long enough to actually enjoy this stuff. You've let your entire health go to shit. That was five years ago. Five years ago. Five years is nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing. He just died. Fell over dead. I'm sure it 100%, I, I don't know if positive yet, but I'm, I'm sure it had something to do with his health. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now, that guy would have traded everything he's ever done in his entire life Where's for that? another day with his grandkids, another day with his wife on the lake. Like, these are the things that are most important. And so you can't mask bad health or a bad marriage with a great business. It doesn't work that way. Mm. Some good shit right there, Dom. Well, guys, listen, number one, I like keeping podcasts short. I like giving you something to chew on because me and Todd could talk for like 19. You're like, Andy Elliott, Todd Conklin's podcast, 19 hours. Dude. And people are like, I can't watch a 19-hour podcast. I will I will tell you guys, number one, Todd, he's, he's a great man. He's super coachable. He's a great leader. He openly exposes and talks about weaknesses and problems, things he's gone through. Um, to share with other people so that you can put yourself in his shoes during this conversation we've had so you don't have to wear those shoes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I want you to think, like, he said some pretty powerful stuff. If you guys want to get closer to Todd, okay, you guys can DM him on Instagram. How do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so DM me on Instagram at Todd P. Conklin. Uh, but I'll also give you my cell number. Just just text me. Yeah, shoot him a text. What's yeah, your it's 208 720 five, three, two, six. And that's my personal cell. So don't abuse it. But yeah, I, I, I want to hear from you. No naked pics unless no. you're hot. Yeah. No. And I was just gonna say you're female. But I was <laughs> <laughs> just joking. We're always hilarious. But anyways, but I'm serious too. Um, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Listen, if you guys want to kill it in real estate, you're thinking about getting in real estate, you know, someone in real estate that should be doing better. Hey, forward this video over to them. So you got to watch this guy real estate with Andy Elliott. You know, I really like who he is. Number one, I love who this guy is. Every time I see him, he's just constantly improving. And anybody that I see that constantly is improving, I know that they're massively coachable because progress doesn't exist without coaching. Amen. And 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 listen, I, I, I he didn't pay me to say this, but, um, you know, just showing up to your campus this morning mm -hmm. uh, for this podcast I show up, man, like the cars are parked in a certain way. Uh, I can't even get to the sidewalk before somebody that I don't know is up, like greeting me, welcoming me, great energy. I got hugs. These people are just built different. And if you want to be different, you have to hang out with people that are different. That's it, man. I love it, man. Well, you're a good example, you know, for everybody. Uh, I pray to be a good example. And then what we're doing is building a lot of people to be great examples. Amen. Yep. So I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Make sure you guys hit Todd up. See you guys in the next podcast. Let's go. <laughs>
guys, I just want to tell you, the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.